Year in, year out, there always seems to be some sort of scandal that comes along. And this year, it's Discam's turn. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to Farmers. In this interesting episode, I want to share my three cents on the news I just got about Discam latest moratorium plan to no longer hire white employees. Okay, wait a minute. What year are we in? Okay, I think the more time goes, the more backwards we get. All right, let's take it all the way back to 1994 after apartheid and where this whole BEE, triple BEE thing began. In my opinion, I'm not a politician, I don't have the nitty gritties, but what I understood of it is because, because of the previous economic disadvantages, they tried to create a system where all of the previously disadvantaged folks could then get preference to certain things to empower them, which sounds like a very noble cause, right? But does it have a cap or a limit or an expiry date? Because it cannot be indefinite, right? It's 28 years in. We're almost in 2024. That'll make it 30 years. What has been the outcomes? Can we just evaluate ourselves here? Can we just do a review and look into the stats of how effective this has actually been? Because it's more like nepotism, if you're just going to say, oh, he's my cousin, let me put him as MD or CEO and let him run the company. Whenever you give something that's unmerited to somebody, first of all, they don't respect it, nor do they value it. And thirdly, they will run it down because of incompetence. If you don't have the skill, the qualification, the competence, you cannot do a job Fully. Also, but can we talk about vocational work and how certain professions can only be done by professionals who were meant to do that, aka healthcare, aka pharmacy? How many pharmacists out there are acting poorly because it wasn't actually what they were meant to do? Same with medicine, same with nursing, people who abuse patients, people who do terrible things just for a quick buck because they have no professional conscience. They're seared, they're not in their field, they're just acting in a wayward way. So anyway, I digress. Do you really want to disqualify an entire race group based on skin color when these people are potentially saving lives in the case of pharmacists, because I think the, the meritorium mentioned all categories of employment. And Discam is a pharmacy. It has pharmacists. It has clinics with nurses. It has uh, pharmacist assistants. It has shop front assistants, uh, packers, cashiers in every other category. And those are a little less critical, but the people that are literally going to save your life, should you come with a life-threatening drug-drug interaction, you want a pharmacist that is qualified, that didn't pass on a 50%. You want somebody who is the best at what they do, and that's why they got hired. You want somebody who's going to pick up deadly drug interactions, pharmacological errors, prescription mistakes, which many, many of these prescribers out there do. You want competence. You don't want skin color only. So this really pains my heart. As a very qualified pharmacist myself, um, who's experienced a lot of rejection, a lot of discrimination, a lot of racism, a lot of a lot of things, I still stand by the fact of um, business is for the bottom line. True. But the better you frame your business, 
um, the better it's effective at what it's mandated or its core competence and values are. A pharmacy needs to focus on pharmaceutical care before anything else. You know, you can work around how to improve uh, uh, bottom lines and revenue and all these things once you have dealt with pharmaceutical care first. Okay, customer care comes second. But I digress. Go to your local pharmacies, you guys. This is a great opportunity for me to actually remind the public that your local pharmacy, your independent pharmacy, that's not a chain, that doesn't have crazy metrics to abide by, will treat you better. They will take the time. You know, they will really assess you. They will check your history. They will do the full scope of what a pharmacist in the community does. Um, they will liaise with the healthcare team. They will improve your regimen, your therapies. They will optimize you. Um, and they won't overlook many of the mistakes that get overlooked in retail settings that are chains specifically because of volume issues, capacity issues, time constraints, and just too much workload that's very administrative rather than patient-centered. But I digress. I'm curious as to if anyone else has noticed how every year there has to be some sort of scandal, there has to be some sort of thing that comes out, usually in the second half of the year, um, Q3 and 4, just to like distract people almost. First, it was the clicks thing two years ago. Last year, it was the looting in KZN and a few other parts. Now it's this, I guess. Like, do they take turns to say, okay, this year, let's, you know, it's on cue. Let's do this. Let's release that. Let's do this. Like, I don't know. I'm a little perplexed. Um, let me know what you guys think. <clears throat> I'm really curious uh, because it all just seems so hilarious and sad at the same time. Like, this country has the most amount of potential. It could be the best in the whole freaking world. But because of a few rotten leaders, a few short-sighted individuals who don't care for launching things properly into the future, for having proper plans then the rest is tumbling down. Um, it's so sad. You know, even with this quota thing, um, you'll never know when a quota is percentages. I spoke about this in one of my previous videos when it was pertaining to foreigners because, you know, foreigners also have quotas, especially in pharmacy. Um, they'll reserve certain posts for locals, which is 100% acceptable. Um, and especially in industry where um, there's a lot of tendering with government programs, they want their locals to flourish. And that's great. But it becomes so ambiguous and so unclear where these quotas draw the line. Because even with Discam now, if they had said, or like I think also Clicks has a quota um, for foreigners, which if they say they want only 30% foreigners, when you go to apply for a job, do they ever pull out the sheet to say, oh, we're on 29%, we can't take you, or oh, oh we're on 30% already, we've filled our quota. Like how transparent is any of this? How fair is it that you just have to go by what somebody will tell you at HR or by what somebody's whim of the day is to say, oh no, um, we've reached quota. Oh no, we're full. Oh no. Like show us the numbers. Can you do a public dis Can you publish your stats? Can it be public knowledge? Can you just show the people the stats? We want to see what your current percentages are. How many white folks are working at Discam? How many black folks are working there? And how much does this quota thing range on or versus the number of applicants? We just want to have numbers, you know? Sometimes pictures are painted clearer when you actually describe them. So I'm really curious to know what this whole quota thing is currently looking like and what it potentially could look like and what the impact of that is going to be. Like, do you really are going to prefer 
to not hire somebody who's top notch, uh, distinction student, cum laude, just because of their skin color. And you're going to get somebody who's maybe last of the class, didn't pay attention to much, didn't participate in anything. And you're just going to reward them with a lollipop of employment just because they're black. Like, it baffles my mind. I own a company. Farmers is my company. If I would do this, my company would greatly suffer because I'm after talent. And I believe countries should be run like companies. You should be after talent, not draining it and poking holes for talent to escape. You should be securing your talent and trying to retain as much of it. Let it be based on competence and skill. Do annual training, do annual competition, not competitions, um, reassessments. Do KPIs for your clinical work, your pharmaceutical work, your, um, um, I don't know the names of all the metrics right now, but like assess your people and their competence. Let it always be based on competence. That's it. If I'm doing an MTM review, I want the best person that really knew their pharmacology to come in and say, oh, you know what? This might be a potential. This renal clearance is a little off. Uh, you should reduce the dosage on that, especially if you're going to interact it with or mix it with this other one, um, which is an inducer or it's an inhibitor. It's going to reduce the rate of metabolism of this other drug. So you better just equate that accurately or, oh, hang on. This person started taking treatment three months ago and I had a, a, a prescription from them here. And now they came up with this new prescription from a new doctor. Look, there's an, there's a clash. There's an overlap. There's an interaction. If they take both of these together, they could die. So you want people that's, that are competent. You want people that are sharp, especially in healthcare. This is why people die every single day out of negligence, out of incompetence, and because you had the wrong people doing the wrong jobs. It's like so scary to me. This baffles me. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. I don't want this video to rant and ramble on for too long, but yeah, very, very, very interesting news. My conclusion is go to your local pharmacy. They're better anyways. And um, if you own a business, if you're in a managerial position, if you're in a hiring position, please really reconsider what you look at. For the sake of your company, your country, for the sake of excellence. Why is excellence no longer the standard? We just want to go by. We just want to get by. No, guys, you should be wanting to be the absolute best in everything you do. Excellence should be the standard. Like, anyway, um, yeah, I, I'm shocked. I was going to talk about Discam with their new, um, they have a, a medical insurance that they recently brought out, I think in August or so, but I've been so busy. Um, I wanted to comment on that, but this came up and it took preeminence. So I will do the insurance video, uh, soon, but in the meantime, hang in there guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below and have a great day. See you later.